Bernd Norton from the Four Quartets by T.S. Eliot. <clears throat> time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future and time future contained in time past. If all time is eternally present, all time is unredeemable. What might have been is an abstraction, remaining a perpetual possibility only in a world of speculation. What might have been and what has been point to one end which is always present. Footfalls echo in the memory down the passage which we did not take towards the door we never opened into the rose garden. My words echo thus in your mind. But to what purpose disturbing the dust on a bowl of rose leaves I do not know. Other echoes inhabit the garden. Shall we follow? Quick, said the bird, find them, find them, round the corner, through the first gate, into our first world. Shall we follow the deception of the thrush, into our first world? There they were, dignified, invisible, moving without pressure over the dead leaves in the autumn heat through the vibrant air and the bird called in response to the unheard music hidden in the shrubbery and the unseen eye beam crossed for the roses had the look of flowers that are looked at. There they were as our guests, accepted and accepting. So we moved, and they, in a formal pattern, along the empty alley, into the box circle, to look down into the drained pool. Dry the pool, dry concrete, brown-edged, and the pool was filled with water out of sunlight, and the lotus rose quietly, quietly, the surface glittered out of heart of light, and they were behind us, reflected, in the pool. Then a cloud passed and the pool was empty. Go, said the bird, for the leaves were full of children hidden excitedly containing laughter. Go, 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 said the bird. Humankind cannot bear very much reality. Time past and time future, what might have been and what has been, point to one end, which is always present. Garlic and sapphires in the mud 
clot the bedded axle tree. The trilling wire in the blood sings below inveterate scars, appeasing long forgotten wars. The dance along the artery, the circulation of the lymph are figured in the drift of stars, ascend to summer in the tree. We move above the moving tree in light upon the figured leaf, and here upon the sodden floor below the boar hound and the boar pursue their pattern as before, but reconciled among the stars. At the still point of the turning world, neither flesh nor fleshless, neither from nor towards, at the still points, there the dances, but neither arrest nor movement. And do not call it fixity, where past and future are gathered, neither movement from nor towards, neither ascent nor decline, except for the point, the still point, there would be no dance, and there is only the dance. I can only say, there we have been, but I cannot say where, and I cannot say how long, for that is to place it in time. The inner freedom from the practical desire, the release from action and suffering, release from the inner and the outer compulsion, yet surrounded by a grace of sense, a white light still and moving, erhebung without motion, concentration without elimination, both a new world and the old made explicit, understood in the completion of its partial ecstasy, the resolution of its partial horror. Yet the enchainment of past and future, woven in the weakness of the changing body, protects mankind from heaven and damnation, which flesh cannot endure. Time past and time future allow but a little consciousness. To be conscious is not to be in time, but only in time can the moment in the rose garden, the moment in the arbour where the rain beat, the moment in the draughty church at smokefall, at smokefall be remembered, involved with past and future. Only through time, time is conquered.